Basketball, one of the most popular sports in the U.S., has existed for a little more than a century. The original game invented in 1891 had very different rules than the game we know today. The sport has grown from a recreational YMCA game to an international competitive sport for players of all ages. The history of basketball undoubtedly starts with Dr. James Naismith. Naismith was a Canadian teacher born in Ontario, Canada on the 16th of November, 1861. Naismith was orphaned early on in his childhood, and his uncle led him to study philosophy and trained him to become a priest. He graduated as a physician at McGill University in Montreal and was primarily interested in sports physiology. He later became a teacher at the International Young Men's Christian Association Training School in Springfield, Massachusetts. Massachusetts had very cold winters, and people wanted a game that could be played inside. In 1891, Luther Gillick and Frank Peters, chairman of the Physical Education Department at the YMCA Training Facility, now Springfield College, approached Naismith and asked him to create a new indoor game in 14 days, which could be played during the cold winter months. Naismith also wanted to create a game that could be used to develop skill and that also wouldn't rely exclusively on strength and that could be easily played by a class that he was teaching. He started work on it in December of 1891. James Naismith wrote that he took some ideas from other sports. After discarding the idea of adapting other games like soccer and lacrosse, he began to recollect on a game he played when he was young. He played with his friends a game called Duck on a Rock. Duck on a Rock was a game that combined tag and marksmanship. It is played by placing a somewhat large stone, known as a duck, upon a larger stone or a tree stump. One player stays near the stone to guard it. The other players throw stones at the duck in an attempt to knock it off the platform. Once it is knocked off, the throwers all rush to retrieve their stones. If a player is tagged before returning to the throwing line with his or her stone, they become the guard. The guard cannot tag anyone until he picks up a duck at his feet, nor can he chase anyone until he puts the original duck back up on its platform. It was this game that would later play such an important role in the origin of basketball. The first game was later played on December 21st of 1891. On December 21st, 1891, James Naismith explained a new game using five base ideas and 13 rules. That day, he asked his class to play a match in the court, nine versus nine, using a soccer ball and two peach baskets. The goal was to score as many points as possible in two 15-minute halves. The court length was only half the size of a present-day court, and dribbling, bouncing of the ball up and down while moving, was not part of the original game. Based on the rules, which are not similar today, we see how the first ever game turned out to be only 1-0. The man who made that first basket all the way from midcourt is named William Chase. Early basketball players such as William Chase were often referred to as cagers. The story behind that is that the first games were played with a chicken wire cage around the court to separate the players from the spectator. The story of the use of peach baskets is actually quite interesting. Naismith, who had outlined 13 original rules, dispatched the school's janitor to find two boxes to be fastened to the balcony railing at opposite sides of the gymnasium, where they would serve as goals. The school janitor, however, only found two half-bushel peach baskets, and the game was played with these. Someone proposed to call it Naismith ball, but he suggested we have a ball in a basket, why don't we call it basketball? There were other differences between Naismith's first idea and the game played today. The peach baskets were closed, and balls had to be retrieved manually by cutting a small hole in the bottom of the peach basket and poking the hole out using a stick. The peach basket was later replaced with by a metal rim with a net hanging below, and in 1906, people began opening the net to let the ball fall through. The soccer ball was later replaced by a spalding ball similar to the one used today. The sport was an instant success. Naismith's original 13 rules, the ball could be batted in any direction with one or both hands, but it could not be dribbled because players could not move with the ball. Beginning in 1910, a player could dribble the ball, but could not shoot after dribbling. It was not until 1916, following heated debate, that players were allowed to shoot after dribbling. Throughout basketball's history, no part of the game has been more monitored than the act of fouling an opponent. In basketball's early days, a player's second foul would mean removal from the game until the next field goal was made. 
If a team committed three consecutive fouls, the opposition would be awarded a field goal. Beginning in 1894, players were given a free throw when fouled. Beginning in 1908, players who committed five fouls were disqualified from the game. Based on the severity of the foul, the rules were soon amended so that players were awarded either two shots or one shot plus a bonus shot, which was attempted only if the first shot was made. The rules also determined that an offensive player could commit a foul by playing too aggressively. Another interesting tidbit is that backboards were not always around either. They were later installed in the gymnasiums to keep the meddling spectators from interfering with the ball on its way to the goal. Another addition to the game was a new ball that would replace the soccer ball, but it was also later replaced due to the fact that the laces of the ball holding the leather together were outside of the ball, so one could imagine dribbling would have been much harder than today. In 1892, Lithuanian-born physical education teacher Cinda Berenson Ablot introduced basketball to women at Smith College in Northampton, Massachusetts. Because it was believed that Naismith's version of the game could be too physically demanding for women, Berenson Ablot made the following changes to the game. The court was divided into three equal sections with players required to stay in an assigned area. Players were prohibited from snatching or batting the ball from the hands of another player, and players were prohibited from holding the ball for longer than three seconds and from dribbling the ball more than three times. Basketball's growth spread in the United States and abroad through young men's Christian associations and the armed forces and colleges. Due to its simple equipment requirements, indoor play, competitiveness, and easily understood rules, basketball gained popularity quickly. In May 1901, several schools, including Yale and Harvard universities and Trinity, Holy Cross, Amherst, and Williams Colleges, formed the New England Intercollegiate Basketball League. The development of collegiate leagues and conferences brought organization and scheduling to competition, and formal league play created rivalries. More importantly, collegiate leagues became a critical training ground for officials. Naismith later became a medical doctor specializing in sports physiology and a Presbyterian minister. Naismith was able to see his beloved sport of basketball gain acceptance in numerous countries through the YMCA. The YMCA would be a very crucial component that would later allow news of this new revolutionary sport to be spread all over the world. In 1893, Mel Rideout arranged the first European match in Paris. At the same time, Bob Gailey went to Tianjin, China, Duncan Patton to India, Genzabaro Ishikawa to Japan, and C. Harik Persia. Some of the very first professional teams had very intriguing names in my opinion. Just to list a few, there was the New York Renaissance, the New York Wanderers, although my personal favorite has to be the South Philadelphia Hebrew All-Stars. By the early 1900s, basketball was played at about 90 colleges, most of them located in the East and Midwest. In 1905, teams from the University of Minnesota and the University of Wisconsin traveled to New York to challenge Eastern League champion Columbia University. Columbia's Blue and White Five defeated both Midwestern teams, and the idea of an intercollegiate championship was born. By 1914, more than 360 colleges offered basketball, and the sport had spread heavily into the Midwestern states. The first national collegiate tournament was held in Kansas City, Missouri in 1937. The first professional league was founded in 1898. Six teams took part in the National Basketball League and the first champions were the Trenton Nationals, followed by the New York Wanderers, the Bristol Pile Drivers, and the Camden Electrics. The league was later abandoned in 1904, and the sport of basketball was eventually brought forth later at the Berlin Olympics in 1936.